Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to be balancing redox equations. So you may ask, what is a redox equation? Uh, this is any chemical reaction that involves the transfer of electrons. So ordinarily when we're balancing chemical equations, we only have to make sure that there is the same number of atoms on both sides of the arrow. Now redox equations are a bit special in this regard in that we not only have to worry about making sure that the number of atoms balance on both sides, but also that the overall charges balance on both sides as well. So that just introduces a little bit of complexity into uh, these types of problems. So let's get stuck in and do an example. And the first example that we are going to look at is the reaction of this thing here, which is called dichromate. And that is going to react with iron 2 plus. And what that is going to form is Cr3 plus and Fe3 plus. Okay, so that's sort of the bare bones of the reaction that we're going to be balancing. Now you can see that we have both got, I guess, atoms and we've also got charges on both sides of the uh, reaction arrow here. We need to make sure that both of those are balanced. So how do we go about doing this? <clears throat> well, it is a fairly involved process, but there are rules that you need to follow and provided you follow the rules, boom, 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 we can get through and make sure that this whole thing balances. Okay, you can see hopefully straight away that this isn't anywhere near balanced. Uh, for example, you've got two chromiums here, uh, you've got one chromium here, you've got seven oxygens here, you haven't got any oxygens on this side. All that this is showing is the bare bones of what the reactants and the products are. So, the very first step that we are going to take is that we are going to split this overall redox reaction into two half reactions. Okay, why do we do that? Well, the word redox is short for reduction and oxidation. Okay, so reduction is a gain of electrons and oxidation is a loss of electrons. So we're going to separate those two processes up into individual processes, one of which involves a reduction and the other one of which involves an oxidation. So let's go ahead and do that and you can see hopefully uh, which species are going to go with which. So we're going to have Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus and we're going to have Cr2O7 2 minus and that is going to go to Cr2 3 plus. So these are what we are going to call our two half equations. Okay, and uh, as the name suggests, um, these are essentially half of the processes or the, the, the overall process that is occurring. Okay, in this case, we've got iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus, and here we've got dichromate going to chromium 3 plus. Now, in terms of balancing these half equations, we've got to make sure that two conditions are satisfied. Number one, you've got to have the same number of atoms on both sides of your arrow. And number two, you've got to have the same charges, the same overall charges on both sides of your arrow. And taking those two things into account, balancing the top one is straightforward, balancing the bottom one <laughs> is, as you will see, a little bit involved. So let's balance the top one. So what we do is that we make sure that, first of all, uh, the atoms are balanced, okay? So the number of atoms on both sides of the arrow. Here we've got one iron, here we've got one iron, and so, in fact, in terms of a mass balance, we're happy there. One here, one there, that's all good. The charge, not quite. We've got a two plus charge on this side of the arrow, we've got a three plus charge on this side of the arrow, what do we then do? How can we balance charge? The answer is we balance charge using electrons. Electrons have a negative charge. And so therefore, we are free to add electrons to either side of the arrow in order that 
we balance the charge. So let's think about this. We've got a two plus charge on this side. We've got a three plus charge on this side. Hopefully you can see that first thing, we're gonna need a single electron. And secondly, that single electron is gonna to have to go on the right hand side in order to balance the overall charge. Because now we've got a charge of two plus on this side. Here we've got a charge of three plus and one minus. That makes two plus on this side, okay? So this now is a balanced half equation. We're happy with that. It's all done. Okay? It's balanced by mass. One iron, one iron. It's balanced by charge. Two plus on this side, overall two plus on this side. And again, this is a misconception often with redox equations. You don't have to have a zero charge on both sides. No. All that you need is that the charges are the same on both sides, the overall charges. So, that's the nice straightforward one. This is an example of an oxidation, okay? This is an oxidation because it involves the loss of an electron. And that leads to a nice mnemonic, which I always use, and that mnemonic is oil rig. Okay, and you might think, well, what the hell's he on about here? So, oil rig means that oxidation is loss and reduction is gain of electrons. So, there you go. Now you'll never forget. And the other thing about oxidation and reduction, if your electron's on the right-hand side, it's an oxidation. If your electron's on the left-hand side, it's a reduction because if they're on the right hand side they're being lost if they're on the left hand side they're being gained so we've done the easy bit let's do now the slightly more involved bit so we've got dichromate going to CR3 plus so there are a number of rules that we follow and the first one is that we balance everything except hydrogen and oxygen first Okay, when we're balancing a half equation. We've got two chromiums here, we've got one here. Let's make that a two. Okay, so now in terms of mass balance, we've got everything other than um, hydrogen and oxygen balance, because the only thing that we've got there is chromium. So that's good. The next rule is you balance your oxygens using water. So let's balance our oxygens using water. We've got seven oxygens on this side. We're going to need seven waters on the other side to balance those, okay? And that's all good now. So chromium's balanced and oxygen's balanced, okay? Now, the next rule is you balance your hydrogens using H+, because we've introduced, obviously, hydrogens here when we put in the waters. How many hydrogens have we introduced? We've introduced 14. Seven times two is 14 hydrogens. We've got 14 hydrogens on this side, so let's put 14 hydrogens on this side as well, okay? And now, if we go through and look at our masses, we'll find everything's balanced. We've got 14 hydrogens, 14 hydrogens. We've got two chromiums, we've got two chromiums. We've got seven oxygens, we've got seven oxygens. That's all good. That means that our mass is balanced. So we don't make any more changes to uh, any of the masses here. All that we now need to do is to balance your charge. And how do we do that? We use electrons. We balance the charge with electrons. And again, this step is one that students often get wrong. They don't see which side of the arrow they've got to put the electrons on. Okay, so let's go through this in a little bit of detail. Let's add up our overall charges on both sides. Here we've got 14 plus and we've got two minus. So on this side, overall, what have we got? We've got 12 plus. And we've got a total charge of 12 plus on this side. What have we got on this side? We've got two lots of three plus. And that makes a total charge of six plus. On this side, how do we get this equal to this? just using electrons. And remember, electrons have got a negative charge. So if you're trying to make two sides the same, basically what you're always gonna to have to do is reduce 
the positive charge on one of those sides. Here you've got 12 plus, here you've got six plus. Hopefully you can see number one, we're gonna need six electrons. And number two, those six electrons are going to have to go on this side of the arrow. Okay, they have to, okay? Number one, we've already done the other half equation, the iron two going to iron three, and we found that the electrons were on the right-hand side of the arrow. Now it's always the case in redox equations, if you've got the electrons on one side of the arrow for one half equation, you need to put the electrons on the other side of the arrow for the other one. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? But let's go through and make sure we've done this the right way. We've got 14 plus and two minus makes 12 plus and six minus makes six plus. Here we've got six plus, ta-da, <laughs> we're all set. So here is our half equation now that is balanced, okay? And this is a reduction, a reduction because it's got the electrons on the left-hand side of the arrow. It's gaining electrons. This is gaining electrons. This is a reduction. So this half equation is balanced. Let's go back to our other half equation. Iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus plus an electron. That's all balanced as well. And once we get to this stage, we are nearly there because all that we have to do, nearly, is just add these guys up and we've got our overall balanced equation. However, there's one step that we need to do before this and that is to make sure that the number of electrons that are lost is the same as the number of electrons that are gained. That just has to be. You can't have an excess of one over another. Any electrons that are given up by something are gained by the other partner in the reaction. So those two numbers have to be the same. So let's make sure that that's the case. We're gaining six electrons here. We need to lose six electrons here. How can we do that? We need to multiply this whole equation by a factor of six. Six, 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 okay? That doesn't alter the overall balance of the equation because we've done the same thing to both sides. Okay, and if you do the same thing to both sides of any equation, the equation is still an equation, it's still balanced. Six ions, six ions, six twos are 12, six threes are 18, minus six is 12. Everything's still balanced. And now we've ensured that the number of electrons that are lost is the same as the number of electrons that are gained. So, the next step is to add everything up. Okay, so let's do that. This will take some space, as it always does. 14H plus plus Cr2O72 minus plus 6Fe2 plus plus 6 electrons gives you 2Cr3 plus plus 6Fe3 plus plus 7H2O plus 6 electrons. Now, some people decide to sort of get rid of the electrons and cancel it out when they're doing this adding up. That's great. If you want to do that, that's fine. I would suggest keeping everything and then doing the cancelling out because that way, I think, anyway, you'll make fewer mistakes. That could be your overall balanced redox equation. Nearly. We simply need now to cancel out anything that is the same on both sides. The obvious thing that is the same on both sides, if you've done this correctly, is the number of electrons. Okay, they're gonna cancel out. Six electrons on this side, six on this side, get rid of them, they cancel out. Anything else the same on both sides? In this case, no. Okay, H pluses, dichromates, iron twos, chromium threes, iron threes, and waters. So, what we could simply do here is get rid of that, and get rid of that, and there is our overall balanced redox equation. Ta-da! I told you it was quite involved. Um, the final rule, as always, is check. Okay, it's really easy to make a mistake in all of this stuff that you're doing up here. It really is. So the final thing that you're going to do once you've written your so-called balanced 
redox equation is to check and make sure that everything's still balanced. 14 hydrogens, 14 hydrogens. Two chromiums, two chromiums, seven oxygens, seven oxygens, six irons, six irons. Mass is balanced, what about charge? 14 plus and two minus is 12 plus and 12 plus is 24 plus. So we have an overall charge of 24 plus here. Two threes are six, that's six plus, and six threes are 18 plus, 18 plus and six plus, 24 plus. It's all good. We are all totally balanced. So um, there we have it. That's how to do a balancing of a redox equation. Haha. <laughs> with the proviso that it is in acidic solution. In this case, acidic solution is implied by the fact that we have got H pluses here. Now, um, what happens if we are in a basic solution? Well, there's a couple more things that we need to do. And so let's have a look at an example. We've got two ClO2 plus H2O giving ClO2 minus plus ClO3 minus uh, plus 2H plus. Now here is an equation that we've already balanced, okay? This is a balanced chemical equation and it's balanced for acidic solution. What about basic solution? Okay, how do we go about doing that? Well, a couple more steps. Nothing too difficult. We simply add the same number of OH minuses as we have H pluses to both sides of the arrow that we have in our balanced chemical equation here. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to add two OH minuses to both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. So that is going to give us two OH minus plus 2ClO2 plus H2O, and ClO2 minus plus ClO3 minus plus 2H plus plus 2OH minus. And hopefully you can see where we're going to go with this because what happens when you add H plus and OH minus? You get water, don't you? So let's combine those two to give water now. So what do we get? We get 2OH minus plus 2ClO2 plus H2O, giving ClO2 plus ClO3, whoops, minus minus, plus two waters. And we're nearly there. We are so close to being there. The only thing is now notice we've got water on this side and we've got water on this side. So we need to get rid of those. So Let's cancel them out. We've got one mole of water on this side. We've got two moles of water on this side. So let's get rid of that one mole and let's get rid of one mole of the water there. And you'll see hopefully that is our final balanced chemical equation in basic solution. Again, check. So we've got two oxygens and four oxygens. That makes six. We've got two, three, and five, and one is six. We've got two chlorines, we've got two chlorines. We've got two H's, we've got two H's. That's good, what about charge? Two minus here, one, two, two minus there, all done. So as I say, if you follow the rules for these redox equations, you can't go wrong. As I also said, it's really easy, in fact, uh, to just sort of make an arithmetic error uh, in all these manipulations that you're doing. But hopefully you stick to the rules, you're very, very careful when you do all of this stuff and you check at the end. And um, if you do all those things, you should be a whiz at uh, balancing redox equations. Okay, so we'll see you next time.